Welcome back to the channel guys and in today's Blender tutorial I'm going to show you step by step how to make a baseball in Blender. So I've made a few ball tutorials now, you guys have really enjoyed them so I decided I'll keep doing it. And you can see here this is a baseball and I'll quickly show you what the topology looks like so you kind of have an idea of what we're doing. We're going to be keeping it very simple starting with the default cube and this is going to be the final result. So if you want to learn how to do this let's jump in and I'll show you. So if a new scene opened up in Blender, we're going to select a default cube and we're going to go into edit mode. With everything active, you're going to right click and go subdivide. And under the subdivision tab here, let's make that five subdivisions. And once you've made it five subdivisions, close this little tab here. And now with everything active, you're still going to go shift, alt and S. So shift, alt S on your keyboard and you're going to move your mouse and you're going to round the shape out and then just click like so. And now we have it rounded out. Now we're just going to make sure we have the face select mode enabled and then in our wireframe we're just going to go ahead and select half of this in the front orthographic view. We're going to press X and we're going to go delete face and then we're going to go to our top orthographic view by pressing 7 on a number pad and let's select the back here and we're going to go once again X and delete faces. So now we only have a quarter of this thing like so and what we're going to do we're going to go to our modifiers we're going to give this a mirror modifier and we're going to enable the Y as well. So we have both the X and Y enabled and we're also going to enable clipping. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our add select option over here and we're going to come over here we can see we have this square. So you can see here we have an edge running up and then all of a sudden it goes like this. We're going to start here, we're going to hold and shift, then we're going to come over here and we're going to go down like so. Holding and shift still, we're going to come down to here and then you can see over here we have that same corner as we have up here. But what we're going to do instead of going on this way, we're going to still hold in shift and we're going to keep on going this way like this. So what we have is almost like this Z shape selected over here that runs from this top over down to here. And then you're going to go control B or command B. And while you're doing that with the bevel, you're just going to roll your middle mouse button up once to add an extra segment. And then you're just going to left click twice. And now we have something that looks like this. And what you're going to do, you're going to go to your vertex select option. You're going to select this vertex here in the middle. Go to your proportional editing and with this vertex you're going to go G and you're just going to round it out by bringing it in like so and then you're going to select this one down here and you're going to go G and you can do the same thing here just to kind of round it out. You can see this kind of flow goes around like this and comes down to here. Now what you're going to do is you're going to tab back out, you're going to come to your mirror modifier and you're going to go ahead and apply and then you're going to tab back in Inside of edit mode again, you're going to press A to select everything, right click and go subdivide. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go shift, alt and S and we're going to round this out again. So shift, alt and S with everything selected. And now what we can do is we can make sure our proportional editing is still enabled. Deselect everything and then holding in shift and alt, you're just going to left click on this middle loop that goes around like so. And then you can go alt S with your proportional editing selected and just kind of bring it in a little bit like so. And once you've done that, you can go Shift D to duplicate, right click to let go. So we have this edge here. And then you're going to go P and you're going to go separate selection, tab back out. And now you can see we have this cube.001, which is this object here. And what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and press F3 on your keyboard. And then you're going to type in convert and you can convert this to a curve. Now we have a curve to use to make our stitches. So for now, let's just select the actual ball. Let's right click and go shade smooth. Let's give it a subdivision surface modifier. And for now, let's just come over here and hide that cube by clicking on the little eye here. So we only have our curve. Then we're gonna go shift A. We're gonna go ahead and add in a bezier curve. We're gonna go G, X, move it over to the side. I'm going to go over to our curve settings. We're going to go over to the geometry and then under the bevel option here, we're going to go to the depth and we're going to increase that. And we're also going to enable fill caps. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our modifiers. We're going to give this an array. Let's just give it a few like so for now. And then we're going to go ahead and give it another array. And this is going to be the curve. Click on the little eyedropper here and then select the curve object here that we've created. And now you can see this is what we have, but we need to go ahead and press S to scale that way down like so. 
and we need to come to our array and give it a lot more. So let's go with something like 80 for now. We can always change that number. And with this um, Bezier curve still active, we're just gonna tab into edit mode and you're gonna click on this little box here and that's just gonna display the modifier in the edit mode like this. And now we can come into this Bezier curve and you just have to kind of zoom in close here, but you can see we have two handles here. So we have this handle here and this handle here. And if it's too hard for you to work like this, you can always turn this display off. But the idea here is to kind of take it and round it out by selecting these two handles and then select the whole thing, right click and go subdivide. And then we have a middle point here like this. So now if we turn that back on, we can kind of see this is what we have, right? Now let's bring back our ball. That's the cube so we can see it. And what we need to do here is select the curve and go G, Z and bring it down a bit till we can kind of see it over here better. And then you're gonna go with this active, you can go R, X and rotate it on the X till it lines up like so. And then you can go R, Y and rotate it on the Y till the stitches line up. And then once you're happy with the position like that, what you can do is let's just turn this off for now and you can grab this curve and you can go ahead, shift D to duplicate and then R to rotate it and turn off the proportional editing. So we have one running across from it like so. And in this one, you can kind of move out a little bit like that and then bring that handle down a little bit more and rotate it. So we just have kind of like a stitch going over a stitch like this. And then we can turn that display back on inside the edit mode. And now you can see we have this nice stitching. And you can always come here and scale it if you want to or make it smaller. And if you want to change the thickness, you can just tab back out into object mode, come over to your curve properties here, and then just go over down to the bevel and you can still change it over here. So once you're happy with that, all you have to do as well is just come over to your modifier again. And if you have too many and it's overlapping, you can always just come here to this amount and you kind of see where it meets together. In this case, it might be a little bit different for you, but for me, I need about 80 to 81 of these stitches. And you can kind of look at references to get it the way you want. But this is how you make a baseball with simple stitches. So let's now select the whole thing. Press A to select everything. We're gonna go G, Z, and just move it up. And then we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in a plane. We're gonna go S to scale it up. And let's grab our camera. Let's go into camera view and let's zoom in. And you guys can set this up however you want. I'm just gonna place my camera about here so I can see those stitches. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my render settings. I'm gonna make it cycles. The device, I'm gonna make GPU. And then let's go over to the max samples and make that 50. And by the way, if you don't have a GPU, you can just keep it at CPU. Um, then we're gonna go Shift A. We're gonna add in a light. Area light, we're gonna go G, Z, move it up, and under our light properties, let's give that a power of 350. This really depends on the size of your scene. And let's go to the size here and increase it over here. Now, if we go Z and we go rendered, you can see we have a light on our ball. And if you go Control B and you drag over your camera, you can limit the render to your camera. And you can duplicate your light and place it wherever you want if you want some more lighting. But I'm gonna just go with a very simple kind of lighting setup here. About two or three lights should do just fine, as long as you have a way of seeing your texture. So let's go over to our shading workspace. Make sure you're in the camera view, Z, go rendered. And let's start by selecting the stitches. Let's go new and let's give that a red material, like so. And then let's select the actual ball then we're gonna go Shift A, search, and we're gonna get a noise texture. Let's plug the color into the base here. Shift A, search, and let's get a color ramp node, place it over here. And let's come here to the detail and make it 12. Now let's come here to the roughness and drag that up as well. And then let's drag these two values closer so we get a bit more contrast. Then once we have that done, we're gonna grab the black value here and just make it a bit lighter and make it a little bit more of a color by bringing it into the yellows here, but less of a dark value, something like this. And now all we have to do is go Shift A, search and get another color ramp node. And let's plug the color into that. And let's take this output here and put that into the roughness. 
Now we have a little bit of roughness and let's adjust the values here, bring them in a little bit. And then we're gonna go shift A search and get a bump node, plug that same color into the height and then take this normal and plug it into the normal of your principled and then bring the strength down to 0.1, like so. And here we have our baseball material. If you want it to make, look a little bit less dirty, you can kind of drag these values around here. But as long as we have a little bit of texture here, you could even add a little bit of texture to the red here, the stitching, but I'm just gonna bring the roughness up for now, just so it doesn't look as reflective. And that is it. You can now adjust, grab your stitches anytime you want and go into edit mode and then you can just adjust these Bezier curves here until you are happy with how the stitching is positioned. And just one more thing, if you go into edit mode with this ball, you can actually go ahead and select by holding in shift and alt, select these inside loops in here. You can go control B to bevel them again. And then you can kind of have more topology here that you can select and you can enable um, proportional editing and you can go alt S and you can kind of like grab these and make a little bit more of like a lip around here to make it kind of look like it's been kind of sewed. And also just gives it a little bit more um, definition. So you essentially what I'm trying to say is you make the fabric look like it's kind of being pulled a little bit by adding a bit of a lip. And you can always tuck the inside edge in here a little bit by selecting it and going Alt S and scaling it in a bit. But more or less, I think this kind of really covers what we're trying to do over here. So let's quickly go back into our camera view. Let's select our plane here, scale it up a bit more. Let's maybe make it a bit darker and by giving it a material, bring down the value, and let's give this a test render. And there we have a simple baseball made in Blender. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I'll see you guys next time for another one.